But today we're going to take a quick look at how to use this Yaesu FRG7 communications receiver. It operates a little bit differently than today's modern synthesized rigs, mainly due to the Wadley loop uh, architecture that's used in this receiver. Take a look at my previous video linked below uh, to learn more about the Wadley loop. So the first thing we'll do is turn it on. There is a separate switch for the dial lights. And the reason for that is the radio can be battery powered and the dial lights use power uh, and if once you've got the re receiver tuned you don't need the lights on anymore you can turn those lights off and save some battery power get a little life out of your batteries while you're listening to the radio. Okay, so next is the mode switch the receiver can uh, operate on AM lower sideband or upper sideband and CW and also in the AM mode you have the ability of switching in an automatic noise limiter which helps to reduce impulse type noise much like the noise blanker of modern receivers. So we'll receive in AM the next control here is uh, volume, Natural gas production. and of course that's uh, self-explanatory. The remaining controls are all used for tuning the receiver, and again this is where this receiver differs from most modern rigs. So let's take a look at the controls. The dial set here is not really a switch, it's a slider, and if you look carefully, as I move that, you see how it's moving the pointer back and forth in the window. And that's because most of these old analog rigs, the dial accuracy isn't perfect. Maybe at one end of the band it's a little bit off from the other, or when you switch from band to band. So this allows you, once you get tuned to a known uh, signal, you can move that pointer so that now you're going to be more accurate within that region of the dial. Now the main tuning knob here uh, covers about 1 megahertz of frequency and it's typically the last thing we're going to be using. We need to set up the other controls here first. So the first thing you'll often want to do is select what frequency band you want to tune to. Uh, there are four bands on this receiver. Uh, the first one A covers from 500 kilohertz to 1.6 meg and then 1.6 meg to 4 meg, 4 to 11 and then 11 to 29.9. And you'll notice as we switch the band control switch, we're also switching which band is lit up here on the pre-selector. It's not terribly precise. There isn't a big baffle behind the light. So the idea is that on the A band, we're going to use the lower dial of the pre-selector. On the B band, 1.6 to 4 meg, that's the next band on the pre-selector. And then uh, second from the top, and then the top band on the pre-selector. The tone control is really an audio uh, filtering. Normal gives you the widest uh, audio frequency response. The low position is kind of a high cut to cut some high frequencies. The narrow position kind of cuts high and low and good for crowded amateur radio band conditions, but in most cases we'll leave it in the normal position. The next switch is the RF attenuator. With the switch in the center position, there is no attenuation and the signal goes directly into uh, the front end of the receiver. The DX position uh, puts some attenuation in to help uh, when you've got uh, some moderately strong signals to avoid overload in the receiver. And when you have very long, sig very large signals, very high power signals coming into the receiver, you can switch the attenuator to the local position, and that'll throw a little bit more attenuation into the front end to prevent some overload. The preselector is a bandpass filter that is tunable over the entire frequency range of the instrument. Really what it is is a, a relatively narrow uh, filter that you can tune to be around the signal of interest you want to listen to. And what that will do is to help reject signals that are on either side of the signal that you're tuned to to again minimize some front end overload uh, in the receiver. And the reason why that's important on the widely loop type receiver is that the, the first and second IFs inside the receiver are one megahertz wide. So even if you're tuned to a signal here, you could have a signal that's you know four or five kilohertz, four or five hundred kilohertz away, that could be very strong and affecting the way the receiver is operating. You can use the preselector to help attenuate those strong signals that are off to the side of what you're trying to listen to. So we'll actually see that in action shortly. Okay, so the process of tuning in a desired frequency is to select the band you want to use, adjust the preselector to approximately the portion of the band that you want to listen to and then it's time to adjust the megahertz knob. So now with the megahertz knob you select the essentially megahertz portion of the frequency that you want to listen to. If you want to listen to something that begins with 3 point something megahertz you dial it to the 3. If you want to listen to the lower half of the AM broadcast band uh, you go down to 0 and that's that'll allow you to dial in the you know, 500 some odd kilohertz up to 1 megahertz on the AM broadcast band. As you adjust this knob, what you're doing is adjusting to the megahertz number that you're looking for within that band that uh, appears underneath the number. 
and adjust it until the lock light goes out. When the lock light goes out, that tells you that you've properly set up the second LO in the Wadley receiver. And again, you might want to review my previous video if you're interested in the details of that. So in our case, we want to tune the lower half of the AM broadcast band. So we'll dial to zero megahertz until the lock light goes out. And now we can actually directly read the kilohertz reading off of our main tuning dial. So I'm dialed in to approximately 770 kilohertz here. You can actually hear that signal there. And I'll take a look at the effect of the pre-selector. If you take a look at the uh, strength indicator, if I move the pre-selector, I've actually peaked that signal right about there. Now it's uh, between 20 and 40 dB on that uh, uh, indicator. But as we tune off, we can actually see how the, the signal attenuates and goes down. So there's actually a location where that signal is peaked. And now we've got the band pass of that pre-selector properly centered over the signal that we're listening to. We can also see the effect of the attenuator switch. So again, note uh, the signal strength position. If I switch it up to the DX position, we can see a pretty significant drop in that signal strength. And that, again, if you've got very, very strong signals, that might help to eliminate the distortion or overload in the receiver. And for even stronger signals yet, we go down to the local position, and we can see that the signal strength has dropped off dramatically there. Tune to a different portion of the band. We can simply uh, start adjusting this back and forth. So there's a signal that's 660 kilohertz. You notice the signal strength is low, and that's probably because we haven't tracked it out with the pre-selector. Now watch the signal strength as we walk the pre-selector down to center up on that signal. So now I can see I brought that signal strength way up. So you can see the importance of as you adjust to different portions of the frequency band, you're going to have to track that out with the pre-selector so that you're properly selecting the frequency that you're tuned to on the main dial. All right, let's uh, see if we can tune in uh, a shortwave broadcast station. Let's uh, shoot for maybe the uh, you know 31 meter band up in the uh, between 9 and 10 megahertz. So I'll select uh, band C, uh, adjust the pre-selector roughly between uh, 9 and 10 megahertz. We adjust the megahertz knob now to the 9 indicator and make sure the LED goes out. Oh, and we actually landed right on top of a station here. Okay, and we can see if we play with the pre-selector here, we can kind of make that signal come up and down. It's not as selective as it was down on the AM broadcast band, but it is working. All right, let's take a listen to a couple of uh, amateur radio single sideband signals. Let's start off looking to see if there's any activity on 20 meters. So that's at the uh, 14 megahertz band. So I'll go to the D position here, bring our pre-selector down to about 14, a little over 14 megahertz, right about there. Adjust the megahertz knob to 14, and uh, that'll be signals in the upper sideband mode. So we switch to that mode over here and work our way down into that frequency band here. So there's a signal somewhere around 14,250 or so, we can uh, hear there. Not real, really strong. So there's not a whole lot of activity on uh, 20 meters. Let's see what we've got going on down on 40 meters. So that'll be at the 7 megahertz band. We adjust to the C band here. Adjust now to uh, a little over 7 on the pre-selector. Bring our megahertz uh, tuning down to 7 megahertz. And uh, let's see what we can uh, tune in here on the uh, 40 meter band. That'll be lower side band, so we switch to the lower side band mode. Yeah, there's some activity here on uh, on 40 meters. Yeah, tuning in single sideband signals is obviously a little bit trickier because uh, we've got to make sure we get uh, the tuning just right so that the BFO properly injects uh, 
and demodulates the signal in the uh, product detector. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little view of the Frog 7 or the FRG7 from Yesu. It's a really fun receiver to operate, uh, lots of different knobs to kind of get uh, adjusted and tuned up to uh, listen to a particular station, but uh, performs very well, quite a sensitive receiver, and certainly a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I've got to send this one back to its owner, uh, John, WA2MOL, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the little tour of this. And again, if you want to learn more about the architecture that's behind these controls called a Wadley loop, take a look at my previous video, and again, I'll link that down below. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. And uh, comments are always welcome. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and tell your friends. And we'll look for you again next time. Thanks again for watching.